Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome back to Five and Designer <laughs> Tags. <laughs> we Today have we have a special guest. Yes. Amazing guest. We're so, so excited. And our first guest, actually. So it's a first guest, too. What an honor. Yeah, for yes. us. So beautiful. Uh, yes. Gorgeous. Look at her. The beautiful Honey Mahogany. Miss Honey. Season five, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Season five. That's right. Hi, how are you? Good. Honey, you are a San Francisco native, born and raised, just like Ronald. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. What, what part of San Francisco did you grow up in? Me? Yeah. Oh, like Fillmore. Oh, nice. Okay, I have family there, although I grew up on the west side. I grew up in the sunset. Oh, with, sunset. On the yeah. avenues, yeah. By the beach. Oh, yeah, that's true. It, well, I mean, Shane's kind of like adjacent, too. He doesn't, like, consider himself. But in Modesto, it's like, I mean, it's not like you're super far. I'm from Modesto? Modesto? That's where he's Modesto, from, yeah. Modesto, California. That's kind of far. Yeah. I'm not there I, now. I, I live in Menlo Park now. So that's where oh, okay. I am right here, right now. So yeah. sometimes I do the show from Modesto. So yeah. since the quarantine, I've kind of been going back and forth. Modesto has a really great performing arts center. I've been Yes, there. it's very beautiful. Yes. That's mm -hmm. a little over 10 years old now. So my hometown ballet company performs there. They're the hometown uh, or home ballet company of that uh, performing arts center. Do you know someone named Joe Atkins? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's like one of my little babies. Yeah, I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. He's very talented. My directors like love him. So. Yeah, he um, he he used to come to drag shows back when he was like probably not of age. <laughs> um, drive all the way from ballet class in Modesto at night, and then drive here, and then watch the shows, and then drive back. It was, oh. I don't know how he did it. He's, oh, yeah. I, love it. I used to do that a lot as I was a teenager, too, because auditioning in that ballet auditioning circuit is all in San Francisco. So you'd like go to San Francisco Ballet School to go audition for something. You'd drive back, or you'd come in to take a class. So, But back then, I'm a little older than him. Um, it, the traffic was a lot better and easier, where you could do that type of thing, where it's like near impossible now. An hour and a half, right? Uh, yeah, hour and a half on a good day. So it's like Thanksgiving, it's like three hours. It's terrible. Oh, no. Uh, well, Ronald and I don't have to worry about that, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, 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 I guess I kind of like underestimate because like there's like all these places that are like, I mean, though Modesto is close, it is true. It's very much like different as far as like culture. And I would almost compare it to like, I wouldn't say necessarily conservative, but it's very different. It's not progressive in the same way. And I, I, I guess I kind of take that for granted that being born in San Francisco, I've just kind of grew up. I never necessarily was like, I don't know. I just felt like I never, I didn't ever was like, had to deal with like homophobia or anything like that really. Mm. Whereas like, I mean, I don't know, but I don't know, Shane, did you? Because I mean, like in a, in a Modesto, I would imagine is not. I mean, like really, really, really small incidents, but I mean, they were so inconsequential. And then I went to New York to pursue ballet right after high school. And then every summer consistently, I went away to six weeks to some program. So my window to the outside world was um, very formed already. Yeah. That I know, but I just feel like I, I would take really, granted, like, really, really I'm bad. glad I was born really in San Francisco, not like, necessarily somewhere else. Kind of like, you know, a, little, a little scary, but I don't know, my parents were really good, and so it didn't really, yeah. it didn't really scar me that deeply. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in San Francisco, and I will say, I think, I mean, I experienced some, some homophobia, I went to a lot of Catholic schools, though, so it was, oh, okay, yeah. it was very different, but then my high school was Catholic, but it was Jesuit, and it was, like, pretty, um, I would say, liberal, I mean, yeah. We, yeah, people were not, like, very oppressive, I mean, sometimes people would be like, are you, well, you're gay, we had openly gay people in high school, um, yeah, yeah, so it was hard. I mean, there were parts of it that were hard, but I think that honestly, it's probably nothing compared to That's what, I mean. what people experience elsewhere, like, uh, you know, yeah, like in the Kansas or, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Like I sometimes take for granted, like oh my god, being in being born in SF actually really is a good thing. It would it really yeah. was it made life pretty easy. Yeah, I was very sheltered much. though. It's not like I like, could just like go to the Castro. I was very sheltered in a lot of ways. Well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, me too. Though I was sheltered, but that's more of a thing in my mind about my parents though. But I mean, like when I went out into the world, I never really dealt with it. But yeah, but I also come from like a conservative kind of family, so yeah, that's mm -hmm. a different story. <laughs> me too. That's so what it is. Tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since season five. We have not seen a lot of you on the social media or kind of in this, you know, these queens have made such an economy out of their post-drag race. Yeah. You've really kind of taken a different route. 
Yeah. I mean, I think right after Drag Race, like, I released a single, I released an EP. I think I was actually one of the first drag queens to put out, like, like a full EP in that way. Yeah. Um, right after, I think it was right around the same time Sharon released hers. Um, and... It, after that though, like I toured for a couple years. I did, I stayed local and did like Mahogany Mondays for five years. I hosted that and hosted, could still host RuPaul's Drag Race viewing parties. But, um, you know, outside of doing projects here and there, like with Peaches Christ and, you know, various sort of productions, you know, I did a bunch of productions at Oasis. A lot of it was very focused on San Francisco and local because I think for me, I was just, a, like I was also working as a social worker at the same time right. while I was doing all this drag race stuff. So I, yeah, I was, it was, I was a program director at the Rainbow Community Center actually, which is in Concord. Um, and I used to actually commute and I was living at Pacifica at the time because my dad, my dad was down there. He wasn't doing well. And so I was taking care of him, you know, commuting to, um, from Pacifica to Concord for work. And then like also doing drag and like hosting drag race and traveling. That is not that easy. Is that is easy. Not. There was just a lot. Yeah. So, you know, and so, I mean, th I think also taking care of my dad was a big part of it. Like, mm -hmm. I felt really tied to San Francisco, even though I had planned on moving to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And things happened, and I just never ended up doing that. So it was fine. I think, like, looking back, I don't know that, you know, I, I really believe that, like, you are where you are supposed to be in, you know, in the world. And then, like, you kind of figure out, like, what your next step is, you right. know? And then, so, so for me, it was like, okay, well, clearly that was not the path that was meant for me at this point in my life. I'm, so I'm choosing to not go down that path. And it has opened up so many other opportunities for me. So now instead of, you know, kind of traveling the world and doing drag, like, I was able to, um, uh, become an owner, you know, of the stud and, you know, be a part of the Save the Stud campaign. And, you know, the stud is San Francisco's oldest LGBTQ nightlife venue, period. It was, um, you know, founded in 1966, which is three years before Stonewall. And um, it was threatened with closure and a group of 17 of us, my friends and, you know, uh, people who I knew from the nightlife got together and uh, purchased the business, saved the bar from closing, and we became the first cooperatively owned um, queer nightclub in, I think, the world, or maybe not the world, the country for sure. Um, and that was, you know, that was incredible. It also led me to um, founding the Compton's Transgender Cultural District, which actually is now just the Transgender Cultural District. It's uh, the first, that one definitely is the first transgender, like officially recognized transgender district in the world. And we um, established that because, you know, as a social worker. I worked with a lot of um, uh, queer people and trans people in the Bay Area. A lot of them were getting pushed out of San Francisco because they could no longer afford to live here. And um, working in uh, Contra Costa County, I saw like a lot of people being displaced to places like Antioch and Pittsburgh, where they were just completely isolated. They didn't have the service. They weren't connected to the services they used to. They didn't have access to work. People were far more discriminatory towards them. And they just ended up decompensating. And so when I realized, you know, when I, when I started working in San Francisco on the stud, I realized what a huge role that government plays in really in so many different parts of our lives and also that it could be used as a tool to prevent displacement and also to empower community. And so uh, I worked with um, uh, several different community organizations in that were in the Tenderloin and we established this district that was basically like a um, a tool, a mitigation, a mitigation measure against gentrification. Um, it allowed trans and gender nonconforming people living in the Tenderloin to be at the table when the city was negotiating agreements with developers, making sure that there was inclusive um, housing, making sh uh, or affordable housing included in projects, making sure that you know um, community spaces were a part of the negotiation agreements, making sure that jobs were a part of the community agreements. And so when I was executive director of the district, I was able to negotiate a lot of those things for the community. And that, you know, felt really incredible. And then that led to me becoming president of the Harvey Milk LGBTQ Democratic Club. Um, it also led to me um, getting appointed to the San Francisco Democratic County Central Committee, which is the Democratic Party of San Francisco. And I just actually got elected, like fully elected to the body um, this last um, March. 
And uh, I am now uh, serve as the third vice chair of the Democratic Party here in San Francisco. So those are some of the things that I've been doing in the past couple of years. Just a little you know, bit, just okay. now. <laughs> and then yes, bon bons all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me. Well, I think all of that is just so incredible. And as you know, we all love to, you know, go to the Castro Theater, for example, and see Kiki, you know, with the old drag race girls. But the work that you're doing is so on the ground and so yeah. important, you know. And then just imagine if the stud was gone. I mean, it was like, it's a historical landmark at this point, correct? Well, the, so the fact is that we could not um, historically landmark the premises because of, base, there, there are certain reasons why we couldn't. It, uh, it's not technical, but more sort of as a part of negotiations. And so uh, we basically said that we wouldn't landmark the building and that helped us like get a little bit of a lower rent. So we, you know, that, that hasn't happened yet, but it is definitely a historic bar and it is a legacy business, which the city of San Francisco recognizes, you know, basically that it's important culturally to um, uh, the area. All right, well, incredible. Well, we could talk about this for an entire hour, probably, but um, let's get into Secret Celebrity Drag Race. The reason we brought you on, we wanted your yes two cents, your critique, your expertise, just everything that you want. So we got to share the screen and we're going to get into a PowerPoint. We're all going to look at it. This is a PowerPoint. A well, don't, I hate when he calls it a PowerPoint. They're images, bitch. We <laughs> use a PowerPoint, but stop calling it a PowerPoint. It makes it so formal. <laughs> all right. Oh, yes. Honey, what are your initial thoughts? <laughs> I got to move my, um, my screen. Um, so I, oh, let me actually move it right here. Okay, perfect. Now, I, oh, we, uh, see, wherever I move it, I end up either blocking somebody's name, but it's okay, I can- Oh, that's okay. You know, you can't really, um, we can only see you at one point, the top right corner, no matter where you put your screen. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, I, you know, so I, this is my first time watching this show. Like, I knew it existed. I, you know, honestly, like, I watched Drag Race, um, mostly like as I'm hosting it. And then now that, you know, since COVID-19, um, I have been watching it with my roommates here uh, at home, but I just watch, you know, Drag Race and All Stars. I don't watch a lot of the other spinoffs. Mm -hmm. I did used to watch, um, oh my God, what was it called back when they used to make over like women? Drag You. Drag You. I used to watch that and I thought that that was really touching. Yeah. Um, and then they got rid of it for whatever reason. I need to revisit that. I haven't seen that in a few years. Right, yeah, that was a good show. It was a good show. It was like emotionally, like very, because it was women. It was, kind, but you know what they did is that they incorporated drag you into drag race because now they have those makeovers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And those makeovers are like, I mean, I guess they always had that, but those are really what drag you was. It was like working with people who didn't have confidence or like you know for True. some reason. Well, you know what? I guess that's kind of like what um, Draglificent is, and yeah. um, we're here. They're kind of like that too. Exactly, exactly. So now there are all these shows that are kind of like what Drag U was. Yeah. Uh, I think the interesting thing about this celebrity drag race is it's also sort of like, obviously Rue is like, oh, all these shows like, you know, stealing my idea and having celebrities lip sync. And, you know, I guess World of Wonder was like, well, let's do it better. And so <laughs> they are. And um, what I, I think is cool about it or different is that most of these celebrities are already performers. So they already have right. that in the bag, which makes it, I think, a little, like a little more exciting to watch because it's like, oh, there's like these amazing personalities that are already there and then you just have to throw something on them and they're going to be amazing. So that, so that part I thought was different and cool. Um, with these three women, I thought that they were so different, which was great and wonderful. I think it was really good casting. Like, you know, Madison Beer, she was this like gorgeous little sex kitten, you know, very like, she's a singer, she's sexy. She's, um, you know, I guess like uh, what society deems as like, you know, very beautiful. Um, and then there's like Haley Kiyoko, who is super cute and actually queer, which I loved. I loved that they had a queer woman on there. Yeah. Um, and she secretly actually gave me like something about her face, like not in this picture necessarily, but like when I was watching her, looked a little like Lizzo. And not just because she's a little like chubby, but it was like in the teeth. It was like in the, I don't know, there was something about I her. I could see it. Right? Yeah. And, and then there's um, Phoebe, who 
was had so much personality. I mean, I think that she just fit it right in from the yeah. beginning. Well, so, she's a comedian, so she's like she already had it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a super great, like, diverse group of yeah. women. But what I will say though is, since you didn't see the other episodes, this is definitely the worst cast. The, the, it's not the worst cast, but it's the more boring of casts. Oh, compared really? to the other three episodes. Yeah, this was like... Because, honey, the last episodes, they had, like, a Vanessa Williams. Oh. Like, they just had, like, strong people. So this was kind of, like, the most, I kind of want to say, D-list out of all of them. Oh. <laughs> no shade. Granted, yeah. I did not know who any of these girls were. Exactly. I feel like maybe I've seen Madison Beer before. I don't know. I've heard of her. i would heard of her. It, yeah. She has 18 million followers on Instagram. I yeah, she's like, she was like, which blew my mind. Pending and viral. She went viral. And, and then also Phoebe just has like a very familiar quality to her. I don't know if I've seen her before also. Yeah, she started two broke, two broke queens. Oh, like so I've queen. definitely seen her before. Yes. Yeah. And then Haley, I do like because she's like, yeah, like the first queer um, singer, first lesbian singer. And then. Um, oh, yeah, I've heard of her too. I've heard of all of them. Let's be yeah. clear. But, she, um, she, had like, she did pretty well, because at one point she had a song with, like, Kehlani. So she's pretty big. She's, like, big enough. I knew of her. But Shane's also just kind of... Shane's old in the sense, like, he doesn't keep up with times, so... Pay no mind. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, such a, I'm like a 60-year-old queen. It's so, <laughs> like, bad. <laughs> so I didn't expect him to know or care. <laughs> no, so these are... Yeah, so I thought... I mean, I ha- again, I haven't seen any of the other episodes, which maybe makes me less, like, you know, I just I have a... Fresh with a fresh side of eyes, like I no, I like that though. Cast. Yeah. Now, honey, what is your take on cisgender women doing drag? What are your feelings in that space? I think cisgender women have always been doing drag. Like when you think about people, like oh, I don't know. I mean, you, you, like even today, it's like Beyonce and Lady Gaga to me are like. Lady Gaga is very clearly a drag queen, right? I mean, True. Old, she's got a different name. She's got like. Uh, very like extreme makeup and clothes and that is very she came out of the drag world and even Beyonce to an extent is like you know with all that hair and like all those costumes and the like Sasha Fierce like alter ego like is also very drag to me um Madonna Cher like all of that is in a, in a sense drag like you know Rue says we're born naked and the rest is drag and it's true right. um and then even going back um like Mae West and like like women have always been a part of drag and in some ways it's a feedback loop like you know um gay men and 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 trans performers like you know sort of embodying the like the uh, ultimate essence of what it means to be a woman and turning that into a performance and then women you know also sort of like creating that same energy and dynamic and and using that i just i can say i feel like i have so much to say about like that feedback loop because I think it's really empowering um, and it's also really um, it's a good way to sort of critique what is happening in society and what society deems as like acceptable and how we look at gender roles and it's also like a, I think a really powerful tool for taking back one's power and reclaiming like your own identity so I think yeah so I think women have always been a part of drag um, and I don't think Given given that given Rue's line of we're born naked and the rest is drag, I don't think that gender has anything to do with whether or not you are a drag queen. Very yeah. true. I will say, like Madison really has that journey, like you said, of that sort of like stereotypical girl, you know, that she probably, you know, has those 18 million followers because, you know, she's really hot or people really like her hair or something very, very superficial. But it was interesting to see her the best way to put this like it was very heightened it was a very heightened sense of femininity you know almost in like a b-52s type way yeah. you know and so it was interesting and i was like well you know like why don't all the kids do this why don't all the kids dress this zany or elevated or however you want to describe it because you know you see her and she's got the loose wave and you know right. the winged eyeliner and she looks like any girl you know you see looks just like her mama yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, she totally did. You know, she did. Girl, you'd see on like the bar or the mall or wherever you're at. So her sort of interest even in sort of taking it and elevating to this level was really, really interesting. And like you said, circles back to that, um, that drag has always been there. She wanted to maybe explore that more elevated persona because her, you know, persona right now, for lack of better words, 
basically very basic. You know, it's very Instagram friendly, very blah, you know. So mm-hmm. so I, I've had a hard time with the show in general. I've liked it more when the men have done drag, you know, mm-hmm. in the classical sense of you know, men imitating women. But now listening to your perspective on it and the ep- two episodes where they were predominantly female with the Vanessa Williams episode, as he mentioned in this one, I, I see more of your take on it. Yeah, I mean, I I also, like, perform consistently with women and, like, I, you know, whether it be burlesque performers, drag queens, etc. And so, to me, those two worlds have never been separated. Um, But, and so it's always interesting, like, yeah, I understand that there is a different level of, I think, um, uh, suspending your disbelief when it's, like, um, like, a cisgendered man, like, (laughs) like there is that part that's like kind of either ridiculous or like amazing because they're so convincing you know as a woman um but I you know to me like drag is beyond it's like like it goes beyond that it's really about like the emotions that it evokes and like also like the techniques but it's not like, like the illusion to me can be so many different things um I, if we're, are we, are we gonna, um, just in terms of like how this is gonna go, are we gonna like go through to like the different parts of the episode or? Yeah, yeah, we can move, we can move on. I, Cause I was like, I can, I kind of wanted to at some point talk about Madison and how. Yeah, and yeah for sure. So next we kind of go into the mentors. Yeah. So it was Alyssa Edwards. The first thing I uh, said when she came out was, I was like, did you stone those tights? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I love, I mean, Alyssa's my season five sister. Um, she is so amazing. She's incredible and she's so sweet and down to earth in person, but also like exactly how she appears on the show, like yeah. literally always in the mirror, always looking at herself, like, like, <laughs> like, just, like talking to herself in the mirror. And it's incredible. Like I remember we used to like walk down, like when we would be walking from like set to set or like if we there was specifically one time where we were off site and filming in like the streets or something and we were all walking down the down like the street and the uh we lost Alyssa and we're like where's Alyssa and she was literally a block down like checking herself out in the window like yeah like looking at herself and that's just who she is um I love her I love you Alyssa I love her because um she is such a star and everything that she says is so hilarious. And it's not that she's trying to be funny usually, it's just that the way her mind works is just so, I think, bizarre and crazy and just genius. And um, of course she, you know, should be on the show and be like, you know, a mentor. I mean, because uh, she's fierce. Um, That being said, the one thing that I was a little like worried about with Alyssa is that she is like very naturally pretty and you know like had laser on her face like is very smooth very snatched face like very feminine yeah features. yeah i was thinking that too i was thinking like she because she's 40s and i was thinking she doesn't look she doesn't look it but shane thinks she looks older <laughs> no shade Yes, I'm going to call you out, bitch. But I was just like, no, she looks young as fuck. Especially in, as a boy. Like, I feel like she doesn't give me 40. And it's also her personality, too. But she just looks young to me. Yeah, I mean, she looks really good. I mean, and she she's the first one to tell you that she's had work done. I don't know what she's had done. And I, you know, wouldn't say. Oh, we really talked about that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, she, if you see her out, she's like, oh, <laughs> there was one time. And she's like, she's gonna, I'm going to get a text message about this. Um, <laughs> there was one time where we were at a club and she was like, honey, don't I look gorgeous? And I was like, yeah, girl, you always look gorgeous. And she's like, no, no, no. Do I, don't I look good? And I was like, oh, okay. So you got something done. I was like, I couldn't tell what it was. Um, but you know, a little Botox here and there, a little, you know, filler or something. Every, like most of the girls do that. I have never done that. Not saying that I never would, but um you know yeah. by the way your skin i'm just like staring oh. at it. i can't even concentrate you are so luminous just i know lighting it's just incredible thank you it's no. like a, yeah, you know quarantine does a face good it's all that like face treatments in the morning all the essences exactly. I'm like, I, did a face <laughs> face. I know i was sharing the screen with this gorgeousness okay so let's talk really? about 
uh, Miss Monique Hart, Brown Cow Stunning. Brown Cow Stunning. I love she is stunning. I, um, so I've hosted, like I said, I, I've hosted uh, RuPaul's Dog Race viewing parties forever. And Monique was one of our guests. And she's actually one of the girls that I got to drive her around a bit and, you know, hang out with her. And she's, she's like real and down to earth also. I think most of the girls are. Um, but she's also just like super intelligent and like, you know, like, I just had a wonderful time just talking to her and hanging out. But like, even on stage, like she's, she's amazing. Uh, she's very talented. She does like makes her own wigs from scratch and like also oh. many of her costumes, like she makes herself. And so I, knowing, knowing that she does all that, like, I don't think Alyssa does her hair or costumes. <laughs> yeah, she's not one that knew her. Huh? either uh -huh. probably doesn't have time either to really no i mean you know she's many things like she's obviously she's had her own tv show she's a choreographer she's amazing in so many ways but to me i there's a i believe that she gets most of her stuff like made and she yeah. um on her own show her netflix show dancing queen she goes to the designer studio and you kind of see them fitting her and doing making the yeah it's the designer really talk about the hair the queen that, but, but that the makeup she does herself i'm sure for the yeah. most part um, but the hair and yeah, and the clothes she, but Monique very much does all of that herself. And so when she was on, I was like, oh, well, she's going to turn it out because she has all those skills and she'll be able to transform every, you know, this person. Yeah. yeah. All of these girls from their season to like their mentorship or kind of when you see them post drag is you just see the budget come in and then right. is. speaking of budget and our other mentor, Miss Banji, I cannot get <laughs> She got her teeth done after. Was, no, her teeth were always that straight. No, she always had them. She, uh, she got them bleached. There was there was something. She really? got it very tough. <laughs> so I just I oh, I guess I, they, I mean now that you mention it, I guess they're bright. But I do remember always like when her her season. I do remember thinking they were really straight. Yeah. So and it really has changed her face shape. I mean, she looks gorgeous. Uh, Ronald feels she's a little bit wet still, but I kind yeah, of <laughs> we like to unpack each illusion. So let's do that too. So yeah, I because it, it's a it's a camouflage t-shirt, and I get it because it's her aesthetic to an extent. To an extent, she's giving us banji realness. <laughs> so I can appreciate it, but when we're on the when we're on TV, and we have a budget now. I'm just gonna expect a little bit more. Then a t-shirt and some latex gloves, but it's cute. It's cute for a drag number, but not for the, not for this. Right? Yeah. I I you know I didn't have a problem with it, but I definitely hear what you're saying. I hear that like like I her drag is a little I'm gonna use the b word. It's a little more basic, and that's <laughs> my drag is also a little more basic. But like hers is like very like throw a t-shirt on, no boobs, no, you know, yeah. thing. like, I don't even know if she's tucking under there. I mean, whatever works. Um, I'm all, I'm all for the jock strap and like a loose t-shirt kind of drag. Like that is so much drag all the way. Like I'm here for it. But like that also made me a little concerned for her as a mentor because, mm -hmm. you know, Vanjie also like doesn't do very like, even her makeup is not like drag. It's like kind of like, you know, your homegirl, like, it's a little right. bit, like, uh, I was amazed by her lace front wig, and so her edges are, like, pulled down, like, her human like, edges, or her, are, like, uh, you can see, uh, well, maybe you'll be able to see it in some other photos, but her edges are pulled down very, like, Chicana style, and okay, well, hold on, well, let me, like, just, down, let me, you know, let me give, let me give Honey some backstory, so, don't mind don't mind Shane again because up until recently I just actually taught him about a lace front he's the kind of queen that didn't know about lace fronts either so he's gonna be amazed by this as well oh I see but didn't you feel they were very dramatic though the edges I mean her they baby were hairs like, her baby hairs yeah her baby hairs yeah let's see if we can go back I, I need, that's I need just to that's that. standard to do though, Shane, because that it it like hides the like the lace. It just disguises the lace. Yeah, part. we don't really have a good picture of the wig. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, just well, you can't zoom in, but okay. Well, let's move on. So the girls do the first. Oh, wait, we didn't. We didn't challenge. get into RuPaul's illusion. We got to unpack. Oh, everyone's oh sorry. No, we have to yeah. unpack RuPaul's as well. Yes. I love I love RuPaul's custom made suits. I mean, I normally like them too. I just want to. 
or you just need to speak on it because we always do. Well, Ronald, I know you have something to I need the picture. I, I need to see. Press. Oh yeah, put the picture back, Shane. I oh can you oh can you not see it? No. Oh sorry. I think you have to share your screen. Okay. Okay. This one's actually this one's my favorite though. You think the ones for the for the four episodes? That one's my okay. favorite. I haven't seen them yet. I think it's an interesting color, like the, the grayish khaki shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, you know, that's fine. I kind of want the, I kind of want the shirt buttoned up. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I this is sort of Rue's stand, this is not a flattering picture of Rue, that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is sort of like Rue's standard, like, look though, is that like, it's always buttoned down in the exact same place. It's always like True. slacks and a blazer. I, this is not my favorite outfit that I've seen him wear in the workroom. Um, I do love a lot of the workroom outfits he's worn this last season of Drag Race, but this is right. not my favorite. Not that it's bad, it's just he's worn a lot of amazing things. Um, oh yeah, no, for sure. I love This one I just like out of the past love, four for this season. I love the color orange and I love that ugly chic aesthetic, so I'm very into this. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's very 80s. I mean, I, I, do, yeah. I, do, I do like it. Um, and you know, you two are the fashion professionals, so I will, I will leave that to you. Um, but I will say this, it was interesting watching, um, the intro and like Rue, like in this segment, because I kind of felt like Rue was like amping it up even more for Celebrity Drag Race. And I don't know if that, if that mm. is a thing, like, I felt like the catchphrases were like a little more forced and like, I don't know, there was something a little bit more forced about his interactions this episode for me than watching like the rest of Drag Race, like the regular Drag Race. And I don't know if that's because they're really pushing that with this audience, which maybe is more straight or I don't even know what, um, but that seemed a little off to me. That is so interesting you had that observation because I just kind of tied a whole bunch of things together I've thought about in the past 365 days with RuPaul. So it's kind of like we were talking about, like it's very like this Zoom. It's like it's very easy to kiki with the girls and you don't have to compartmentalize as much. And you know you're speaking to a very gay audience or a very gay friendly audience on Drag Race. But did you get into the RuPaul show where he hosted the talk show as a man? It was oh, on yeah. for only a few episodes. You probably did not see it. But it was just crickets. I mean, the energy. <laughs> yeah. I think what it is too, yeah. though, it was a matter of the guests that he got were terrible. <laughs> yeah, like he, he he's he's the type where he thrives. I feel when he's able to volley with the person, and I feel like the guests that he had weren't the best for volleying because he is really funny and like. I don't want to say, but they, the guests that he had were essentially kind of boring. Like, they didn't give him much to work with. Right. And it was kind of like Honey was saying, these guests weren't the most charismatic three, or at least I didn't feel they were the most charismatic, you know, group of people that had been on Secret Celebrity Drag Race or just could, or could, you know, volley with RuPaul. It's like Little Richard. It's like when you have Little Richard on as a guest with those old Arsenio Hall episodes, the the ping pong between him and Arsenio was incredible. The, uh, the charisma, the energy. Um, and yeah, I, I very much agree with Ronald. If Ru doesn't have that, it's very hard for him to shine. But I do mm -hmm. think he probably also was kind of like, not necessarily nervous, but I do feel like he kind of felt like he needed to bring it more because they're like celebrities too and like he kind of wants it to do well and like it's almost like he can't necessarily treat them the same as he would just like a normal contestant I don't know I feel like he's probably more conscious of it and honey you probably understand that sometimes you overcompensate as a performer sometimes you have to overcompensate to make up for a lack of energy in the room or a lack of you know, charisma or however you want to describe okay. it. So you really have to take it to 120 as opposed to 100. It's just, yeah, I, it, that's a very delicate thing to do because when you over, you can, you can like try and compensate for like a lack of energy or for whatever you think is missing in a certain scenario. But then like, there's a very fine line between compensating and like overcompensating and where it be, feels uncomfortable and it feels out of place. And to me, that line was just, it was like a little bit pushing it for me. And I don't know why it read that way to me, but it did. 
Well, I feel like everyone was actually kind of like that too, because even like Michelle, like she didn't have, for all four of the celebrity episodes, she didn't have like any like bad critiques. So I'm just like, I feel like she should have, like, that's not her character. I feel like she would have found something to nitpick, but everyone, she was just like, you were great, you were great, you were great. So I don't know if it's like the celebrities were like, you can't say anything bad about us. I don't know. But like, I was just like, really? You don't have anything to say that's bad? Yeah, I thought that too, actually. I was thinking, I was like, mm, she's being very nice to these people. Yeah. Especially since nobody really loses. <laughs> exactly. It's a very positive, like, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, one of the episodes, all three of them won, and they each gave the charity 10, I think it was $10,000 and 10 and 10 or something. I'm not quite sure. Well, they gave them, because the winner gets 30, and then the other ones get 10. So that, they, that, episode, yeah, they, that episode, they all got 30. Uh, okay. I couldn't remember. Well, let's move on. <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was interesting too. I noticed that too, yeah. So then they did the old drag challenge. I will never forget when Jasmine Masters pulled out that loaf of bread in the old drag challenge and RuPaul was like, where did she get a loaf of bread? Oh, so <laughs> nothing. <Craft> services. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They didn't even think about that. But like no old person challenge can top that challenge for me. So Ronald, why don't you speak on <laughs> well, I thought this was good too because I I like that they brought kind of like, kind of it's almost like a comedic kind of like a character kind of drag because mm -hmm. I like that because one one thing I wanted to see when they do have like I guess if you have like cisgender women if you will I would like to see them like stretch further than what their everyday could potentially be because even the stuff on the red that they do on the final challenge on the runway. Even that stuff in a pinch, you could not the clothes, but like the makeup stuff, you could almost get away with doing that in, as an everyday look. So, when I feel like when you have a cisgender woman, you should, it should just be kind of like either crazy on something funny, or what I would even like to see is them do male drag because we, we don't see that enough. So, I feel like those are the type of opportunities I would have liked to see them take when they had the, the female, the cisgender woman. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, we haven't really, you don't see very much of drag kings in drag race. I mean, they yeah. occasionally, there's a couple challenges where they, you know, they make the queens do boy drag or they work with drag kings, but very rarely. Um, I did like this challenge. And, you know, it, the interesting thing, again, is that they all did well because they're all entertainers. Yeah. Um, they all gave it, like, of course, well, my favorite was definitely... Phoebe. Um, and that's the comedian, uh, so yeah. Because she's a comedian, so she already knew what she was doing. But um, Madison actually surprised me. I thought that she was really good as well. I thought she was good too. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Phoebe, I thought, was the weakest at this point. Like, I was like, mm, she's doing okay. But then sometimes I think that they do that with girls, like certain people, because they want you to underestimate. Oh, wait, you thought Phoebe was the weakest? Wait, yeah. Oh no, Haley, Haley. Oh yeah, Haley. I'm sorry, I'm Haley. sorry Haley. Yeah, Haley. I'm, I'm confused. Um, so yeah, Phoebe did amazing, um, who's also Coco Tini. And then Madison surprised me and I thought did really well. And then Haley, I was like, uh, I don't know, like she's not really doing very well. She doesn't seem very confident. And then, yeah, but I think that also like, knowing the show, watch having watched the show for so long, like sometimes they also like set you up for expecting somebody to do badly just so they can like turn it around at the last minute that's true the art of editing <laughs> that is true yeah the editing honey will get you telling a story yes the um, editing will definitely get you okay I I move on so oh, what well, can i also just say oh, really yeah, quickly about that i was dying when um first of all how how phoebe um, knew that Rue's mom was Ernestine and oh. used it as her drag name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she Googled it. That was brilliant. That was um, brilliant. That was so good. And um, I don't know if they knew that they were going to do this challenge or maybe she just knew that because she's such a huge drag fan. Um, and then the other is, how, she made some sort of like Wakanda reference. She said like, she was a part of the Wakanda retirement community or something. Oh. I don't know. It was just like, I, she was just like giving me like these lines. Like, yeah, she, wow. she had the best lines. Yeah. And it makes sense because it's a comedian. Exactly. The, I yeah, agree. I like, I like how, um, I like how Haley dressed herself though. She is giving old lady realness. With yeah. The and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, that's true. She, <laughs> with her, sa they all have saggy boobs. Yeah. Um, so they all look good. I mean, uh, Madison looks a little country. She um, does. 
<laughs> she gave herself huge hips. Yeah, definitely. Um, Phoebe looks like she, she's got like most the most showgirly thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They all look great. It was fun. It was funny. Right, well, let's move on. So next we've got the rock challenge. So I'm, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I couldn't quite pick it up. Now the queens, the mentors sang and then the contestants uh, lip sync the music. Did I interpret that right? Yeah. That's right, I think. Okay. They didn't explain, did they explain that? They did not. I can only, no, they, they I, did I, it I, the I picked that up until I heard Vanjie, because you know, Vanjie's voice is so distinct. And I was like, right. oh, it is, it is them. Because I thought I heard Alyssa, but I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. Right, right. I, I, I didn't realize that that was happening until I heard it. Ronald, did you realize it earlier? Well, yeah, well, because when Rue gave them the challenge, he did like say it kind of briefly. Oh, he did. I see. Uh, I was like beating my face while watching the episode, so I was. <laughs> and well, I almost missed it too. He like said it kind of fast. <laughs> I have a tendency to watch these at between like twelve and one when my ambient is kicking in, so I'm not oh. like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, interpreting everything. Now, first of all, I loved all their like rock girl looks, so I thought these were like so fun. And like Monique with the like Tina Turner wig and this sort of sheer illusion, which is very rare for her. And then Alyssa mm. with this kind of like Betsy Johnson prom thing going on. And then Vanjie once again, giving you that, that Vanjie girl realness. So. Yeah, she doesn't like to use titties, huh? She does not like to. I, you know, I don't think it was the all stars till I realized that. She doesn't, right? Cause she, doesn't. She's, she always will give you flat, flat chest. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it, that's an aesthetic too, but I feel like this, it would have been nice for her to have a, a breastplate. Right. But she always gives us, she always gives us flat. Honey, I how guess that's her aesthetic. Are you feeling about Madison and this kind of like Rocky Horror Picture Show aesthetic? So I, so this was a great performance. I mean, everybody I thought did well. And uh, I was, I will say, so for Madison, I think she looks amazing. However, it was sort of, kind of easy for her to go with this look to me and you know Rue is all about how like drag just you know shows you who you are and it's an extension of who you are and I I definitely think that that's true but like because Madison is so pretty and sexy all the time like I don't have a problem with her like amping that up but like amp it up by like like padding like to twice the size of your body and like really amp it up and like give us that Mae West like over exaggeration and then like if I know understand like Mae West is not a rocker and this was a rock performance but like you know put a little bit of the ridiculous in there because we you don't drag part of drag is like you don't want like folks to take you too seriously and she did a little bit of that like there were a little bit of like winky moments but I felt like she could have gone a little bit further if it wasn't like maybe like more padding or less sexy then at least like give it a lot of like give it more energy I think it was a little bit of a safe performance um, not that she yeah. was trying, but it was a little safe for me. She looked like Ariana Grande at times to me. At yeah. Some angles, I was seeing Ariana. Or Pat Benatar. It was very Pat Benatar. Like, Lord. I just felt like if you put like a big skirt on this, this could have been like John Galliano for Dior. You know? Totally. You know? So it was like it, you said, it was a little lackluster because it wasn't so big. You know, if this had been on like a Violet Tchotchke, it really would have been amazing. But since she was cisgender, it was kind of like, eh, costume party. What do we think of Phoebe in this uh, Playtex number with the mohawk? I, I thought it was absolutely amazing. I mean, she kind of is giving me a little bit of Bob the Drag Queen here. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, right? A little bit. And I am living for it. I mean, I think she looks, um, she looks like a drag queen. Like, there's nothing to me, like, if I were to see her perform, there's nothing to me that would say that, like, oh, well, you know, she's a cisgender woman or anything. It would just be about, like, her performing as a drag queen. And, uh, yeah, there, I think it's absolutely, there's nothing that I, there's nothing I find flaw with in this look. Yeah, it's like quintessential drag, if you will. And then what about our third friend here? So with her uh, homage to the wrestling TV show Glow. (laughs) I love, okay, so she definitely looks like a drag queen and it's like kind of a drag queen that is, she's kind of like a penetration drag queen. If you all remember Penny from my season, Penetration, she was the first one eliminated. Oh, Um, I'm gonna have to look that up. (laughs) um, It's just like, it's a very specific type of drag. It's a little more old school, but like, yeah 
you know, I mean, and granted, this is like sort of an 80s challenge, but like they, she looks incredible and she actually surpassed my expectations and her performance, I thought was the best. Like she really gave it energy. Like that's what I mean. That's what I meant with Madison. I should also be using their drag name. So Haley was like, Shit, I can't remember. I barely remember yeah, their real names. I remember the drawings. <laughs> so, girl, I, I took notes. I, while I was doing my makeup, I took some notes. I wrote shit down. So, so professional. Phoebe was Coco Teeny. Madison was Coral Fixation. Oh, yeah. And Haley was uh, Queen Elizabeth. Or, uh, yeah, Elizabeth. Which, oh, yeah, yeah, I bet. Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, really, like, it should be like Queen because she was Queen Elizabeth because she loved Queen Elizabeth and she's a lesbian and she wanted Les to be in there. Yeah. And I'm like, it should have been like Queen Lezzo or something. Like, uh, like you've yeah. got like Lizzo reference. It's Elizabeth. It's also very much more lesbian than Queen Elizabeth because it's True. like, it gets lost. So Queen Le- I'm going to call her a Queen Lezzo because I said so. Um, <laughs> what was Madison's name? Her name? Uh, Coral Fixation. Coral Fixation. Because she's connected to, she was like, I'm connected to the water and... You know, and then wait, then Phoebe was who? I thought she was Coral Fixation. Phoebe was Coco Teeny. Coco Teeny. Alyssa, uh, Alyssa, like, explained that really well in the episode. She was like, yeah, a melanated spicy cocktail or something. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. girls love a cocktail name. They've all the cisgender women have had one. <laughs> they love. Okay, all right, that's, that's saying something. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I thought that. Uh, like Queen Lezzo, she was, I think, really gave the energy that I wanted to see from Coral Fixation. The Coral Fixation was good, but I think like Queen Lezzo just like brought it, the attitude and the emphasis on the syllables and the anger and the power and the frustration, it all came out on stage. Really powerful. For sure. Okay, let's move on you. to the next challenge scene. All right. Oh wait, can we actually talk about how they called this Dragzilla? which is also the name of a show that exists. The Boulay brothers do Dragzilla. Like that's their whole, like this party that they did. Um, I think it's Dragula is the- no, Dragula. Dragula. Oh. I actually have a little funny side story about them. So I'm like loose friends with Darren Stein who did uh, Jawbreaker and a uh, gay best friend. So uh-huh. I went to a screening party in LA and the Boulay brothers were there out of drag. And like you totally, you know, they they don't read anything like they read in drag. Right. So, you know, I didn't really know who they were. And they were sitting across the room. It was my first time seeing that. And I'm not like a horror person, like even just a regular horror movie, like mm-hmm. cringe. And so I was being like super, super dramatic, be like, ah, you know. <laughs> they were like, you're we were sitting across and your reactions were making us laugh. And we could tell that was obviously the first time you'd seen the show because they were so like dramatic and crazy. The <laughs> show, uh, the Dragula show. So because oh. it's very like gory, and I'm not that person. So I'm no. So so they just they found it hilarious. My uh, reactions were so authentic because they were so like over the top. <laughs> There is, why, so, okay, so clearly I got my horror movies mixed up, like it's Dragula, not Dragzilla, but um, there is a Dragzilla, though. I'm sure somewhere along the way in the history of drag of the past hundred years, there's something Dragzilla, some sort right. of show. I think they might have actually also used Dragzilla in one of the early RuPaul's Drag Race shows because they did that photo shoot where they were, didn't they do a photo shoot? Oops, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, they did a photo shoot where they were like a drag monster, right? Wasn't that Raja's season? Was that season three? Or am I thinking of America's Next Top Model? I don't know. It's all blurred together. <laughs> I, ha- I older, haven't revisited no. those older Vaseline lens seasons. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we're but satisfied. We covered all topics for the Dragzilla extravaganza. Okay, so then the judges, Ronald loves to unpack the illusions for the judges. Well, we're, so, we're stylists. We have to unpack everything, every illusion. Oh gosh, well, let's I, just go left to right. Ronald, how, yeah. what are your feelings on uh, Ross's jacket? I'm actually not mad at this. This is like, it's better than last week's because I really, really hated last week's. Yeah, this one I kind of like. I'd wear it in a pinch for like some type of like 
spring moment. I wouldn't be opposed to wearing it. Um, really no particular type of way about it. Yeah, you would wear it too, bitch. Right. Like, I, I could see you wearing that. <laughs> and then here's Michelle and in then, her off the rack uh, Catherine Malandrino number from 2007. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I kind of like Michelle's look. I think she looks beautiful. It's just, it's very toned down for her, like you were saying. It's very, everything was very muted with her this episode. So she doesn't, like normally she'd add some big gaudy necklace or something. I don't mind that because, you know, I'm, I like that color because I'm really into like nude colors right now. But what I would have liked to have seen is her do kind of like bring the eyes up and do kind of like a, a mixed nude eye too. Right. Like, I don't I feel agree. like there's flow between the eyeshadow and the dress. But I agree. Okay, now the person who really turned me out was Rue. That, I wish we had a shot of her oh with that God. belt, that little nip, nipped waist. Oh, it was so incredible. Rue Ooh, looks funny. really good here. Um, really good. I, yeah, I love her in white hair. I love her makeup and her, it's like very classic makeup and her, I mean, it kind of goes with the classic sort of dress that she's wearing, which is like that sequin fringe number, mm -hmm. um, black fringe. And, but um, I don't know if you've noticed, and this has been a pet peeve of mine all season, and I don't know who her makeup artist is at this moment, but her face on season, what is it, season 12 now, um, is so much more pink and red than the rest of her body. Her body is like gold and bronze, and then like her face is this like corally pink. And it's so disconnected. And I, in this shot, it does not look like, I think that I didn't notice it during uh, Celebrity Drag Race. So I don't know if they used a different makeup artist. Oh, honey, isn't it? Um, yeah, we thought Isn't Raven it Raj? Was isn't it? Wait, no, isn't it Raven, Raven who does it though? Yeah, we thought Raven was doing it consistently, like everything. She, I, it's looked different this season on drag. You know, I'm just Ooh. saying it's <laughs> very clear that Rue's face is a little more pink and corally than the rest of her body, and that should be okay. taken into consideration for next season. Now, that makes sense. <laughs> this if it is Raven, if it is Ra things, you don't see. <laughs> if, if it is Raven, you know, she's a very talented makeup artist, clearly. And it's just interesting because I did not notice that, like, I, you can actually see when Matthew, Matthew um, left like when they brought in the new makeup artist and I think it was Raven at that time and like you could see like the makeup artist sort of like figuring out Rue's face and right. like it's always beautiful but it was like a little different each episode and like different elements were moving and changing and then last season I thought it was really 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 consistent and you know she always looked stunning and it was no surprise that you know it was Raven that was doing her makeup this season, it's not that she doesn't look stunning and her face isn't amazing. It's just that the color is just slightly off. And it wouldn't be a problem if she was wearing like high, like collared things where you couldn't see below like right. her chin. But because you can, she's oftentimes bare chested and bare arms. Like it's just very marked for people who pay attention to that stuff. Well, I wonder if it has to do with like, cause I noticed this too. I was like, I saw a couple of clips of like, just like older seasons. And I wonder if it has to do anything with like her face potentially changing. I almost feel like mm -hmm. <laughs> before it's like, like I almost feel like now it's almost more angled, if you will. Like her jawline's almost more pronounced now. But that it's, has nothing to do with the color. I'm talking about. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You're talking about color. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about like trying to figure out the shape. You're right. You're talking about color. Though. I mean, do you have any inside tea why Rue doesn't do her own makeup anymore? Bitch, why would she? I don't know. I'm just I fucking wondering. wouldn't. It's like an Alyssa thing. I think some things you're like, I I wouldn't mind somebody coming in, like a groomer coming in and doing my hair and my face, but like, I would never want a stylist. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want someone to style myself. So or no, like, I don't even think Rue can do makeup. I don't know. I feel like it's so personal. No shade. I don't think that bitch can do makeup. She probably, like, I, because if you that is not at, a, that, I, t I, from what I know, that is not a talent that Rue has. Now, she, yeah. she, she is queen of queens. She is... A, a brilliant and you know a truth teller in many ways and you know no shade to her she's got many other talents and she doesn't need to be a makeup artist yeah to know how to make dresses right you can't you can't be good at everything right yeah. and it is clear like i think she was obviously doing makeup in the beginning of her career when she was go-go dancing in new york but like it was once like 
Matthew and, you know, Zaldi, like, really came in and, like, did her hair and makeup and costumes, that's when she blew up. Well, that's what I'm saying, because, like, when she was doing, yeah, like, when she first started, I'm sure she was doing, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure she was doing it herself, but that was also a different time, too, but it's, like, she, like, she would be good if you gave her a challenge of doing, like, 80s, 90s makeup, but we can't expect Homegirl to come out the woodworks and give us, like, cut creases and contour, like, but she didn't grow up with that so it's just like she does I don't she doesn't know how to do that no shame and she, yeah it's just not I, it's she's not used to doing it, it I, I don't think she's done it in a long time there was that there was that episode of Project Runway <laughs> I mentioned it before we mentioned it on a previous episode Wait, where she was giving you that white shirt and the red necklace like Diana Veerland style and oh. it, it was oh I mean you want to talk about a meme living in infamy Poor thing. I think they tried to remove it at some point because it's a point in time where you couldn't Google that image anymore. It was like a very Beyonce, like, remove all those images. Take it down. Um, it, you know, so uh, did they, t- did y'all talk about like what happened? No, no, we don't know anything about that. But if you have some inside juice, please tell. I mean, this is just what I've heard. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what really happened. But what I heard happened was... That she got on a plane and, you know, her makeup and hair people were going to come on then like another flight and she went and then like all the flights got canceled. Maybe there was a storm, there was something and she had to film the next day and they were like, you have to be in drag. Like, you know, we're, you know, paying you X, Y, Z or whatever. And she won't do it without money. She won't be in drag without money. Right. And so she just did it herself because nobody else there could do it. And so... You know, if you look at her, like, she must have been, like, someone was going to, she packed her. Can we pull her up? Can we give the people re- uh, reference, Shane? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Because it, it's clear to me that she threw that wig in her suitcase, being like, Matthew is going to come and just judge, judge this up once oh, it is. Yeah, I was, I was under the right. impression that she just had to buy a shake and go wig off the street. Maybe <laughs> something. I don't know what happened. Who got her that wig? Who pulled that shirt for her? I mean. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, but she made it work. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's no. It is. But, um, and then who does her wigs? Is it, um, isn't it? That was Delta. Because she has a wig line. Isn't it Courtney Ackman? Delta, or um, some reason, took a break. I don't think they had a falling out, but for some reason, she's not doing it right now. Yeah, because Delta used to do the wigs. But oh, Delta. Who's doing it Oh, now. yeah, Delta used to. Oh, oh, she's not doing it now? I don't know. Yeah, I, she alluded something on Instagram about it, but not... Um... But she didn't wear um, the Courtney Ack wigs, right? Okay, so here's the RuPaul Ooh. illusion when she had to do her own makeup. Ooh. Yeah, it's very... Um, 1990. <laughs> Very 1990. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's 1990. And that's what she gave in 1990. And it was cute for 1990. So it's just like... Yeah, in 1990. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> oh, that was... Yeah. So, yeah. So, no, I don't think she does her own makeup. <laughs> oh, honey. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> but also too can we even down to that that red necklace and that shirt <laughs> <laughs> i think she had a concept in her mind and it didn't work out so or she just had to make it work like she didn't have like you know she like she wears couture like it's made for her and so do you know well, yeah because i know she said before that she um a lot of the stuff she wears on the runway it's like from her archives because mm-hmm. no one's no one's seen it yet so yeah. she'll wear it to like that's what i'm up. dying to know i wish they could put a little like reader on the bottom of the screen that was like rupaul show 1996 episode 17 well that's what she should I do that's what she old, should do right now while we're in quarantine she should do kind of like a tour of her closet oh my god i'd die that'd be genius die okay let's get back okay so carson I think I have those eyeglasses, <laughs> some sort of wallpaper bar- bomber jacket moving on. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay, the queens, Monique and Alyssa in their Gone with the Wind fantasies. <laughs> I kind of in her ode to TLC. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> um, I, like, I like Alyssa's. I do like Alyssa's. I like her hair. Angie? 
Benji. Well, you thought this was a skirt. Or wait, I, I, you thought it was. You a thought skirt. it was. A, you thought it was pants. I thought it was a dress. We don't know. We still don't know. I, I think she looks very like Pocahontasy. Um, I, I do appreciate the color scheme, the nudes. It's very pretty. But um, it's, you know, it is, it's her aesthetic. It's very like J-Lo, Destiny's Child, like early aughts, like girl band thing, right? Um, it's not as drag as the other two. It's also like completely different story. Like the other two are like both fairy tales, maybe not the exact same story. And then- And then Banji. Then Banji. <laughs> if they gave them some sort of theme to work with like fairy tale or gone with the wind or something like that yeah because they're both very on the same they are you know page and then banshee's just over here like i said banshee's gonna give you banshee and she's not gonna deviate yeah but i live for that about her though at the same time right Right? it's (laughs) pearly white teeth honey pearly white teeth so you can see the edges her makeup is always really beat though because she looks gorgeous Mm -hmm. i like banshee's makeup I don't see okay and this is like as someone who's like also in kind of in the same boat like her makeup is nothing special she's already got a face that works for drag this is like you know and again like my makeup today is not super special I just kind of like put a little light bead on because my face works for drag so but that made me actually worry when I saw the makeup that she did on uh Queen Lezo, because like, did you like when she first before she put her lashes and all that stuff on? I was like, mm, her, her makeup is rough compared to the other two. True, um, and <laughs> it, I think it's because like Banshee, she's also not a makeup artist. Like she does her her look that works for her face and her brand. That's always the same. Right, she's not like like Monique is like a fucking like magician. You know, she looks completely yeah. different out of drag. Yeah, she will yeah, give Banji credit better. though. Her makeup's improved though over the years. She was real rough when she was in that little flower bomb dress when she got infamously got kicked off and said, Yeah, because yeah. like, I like how her because she it's like always like a perfect glow right here. Her highlight right here is always like really just like striking for for Banji. For Banji, yeah, she's great. Listen, like I said, she knows how to paint her face. <laughs> is she like someone who I would say like could just paint anybody? I don't know. Well, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm always really amazed by Trixie's like makeup videos because Trixie can really paint any person. On, but uh, <laughs> also, it's like her face will work on anyone because it's just like right. it's like you're creating an entire new species. She's, make, she's making yeah. a new face. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's 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 one thing I always thought about Trixie too. I would like to see her kind of give us something more toned down because I don't even know what her. I don't even know if she down could. Like. She might just read man otherwise. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Also, why has Michelle never given her that feedback? She gives every freaking queen that Switch feedback. I know. And then they, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Honey, I'm would you let uh, Trixie do a Trixie face on you? Sure. I would love a Trixie face. I'm sure I would look just like Trixie. Like, it yeah. was, and I would actually want to see what that looked like. That's, I think, I think Trixie, I mean, she's got her own makeup brand. Like, yeah. she is obviously very successful, very kind, very musically talented. She's incredible. Yeah, um, I loved her documentary. It was really, really good. So. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's not get too off topic. That could be another episode for us. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next. Okay, so then the looks. So uh, Coco Tini came out in this uh, taxi cab number. Amazing. And then Madison, Cora, Fixation, I don't know if I pronounced that right, kind of came out in this B-52s come Dolce and Gabbana fantasy. And then Queen Lesbeth came out in this uh, sort of Marie Antoinette uh, cotton candy movie. Thoughts? Yeah. So here's the thing. Like I said before in like the last episode, for the main stage runway, I'm expecting more than the regular competition, if you will, because these are celebrities and they have more resources. So I'm expecting the costumes to be just like expensive. Nothing should be cheap and seen before. So I like, um, what's, the, what's the girl from Two Dope Queens again? Uh, Phoebe. I like Phoebe's because that's cute. I like the little taxi cab on the hat and the uh, the pattern on the inside that's cute but that cage i've seen so many times before and it's i'm sick of seeing that cage like that we should never do the cage again it's like so been there done that and it looks cheap ronald when you're saying cage what do you mean i don't understand um the skirt 
Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yes. The cage skirt. Yeah. With the flowers. I, I mean, I agree. Here, my thing, here's my thing. Number one, I'm like, who is actually making these costumes and who right. is making them wow. a budget? Because I don't think it's the celebrities. I think it's the queens who are making their, either the queens are making their costumes or the show is giving them budget. And the I think the are, show's giving them budget. I don't think they're, they're making anything. Oh yeah, they're definitely not making anything. Yeah. So I don't think why they screw over, why they screw over coral fixation then? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, what girl with that fixation look. looks like when it looks like the queen you know like there's always the girl who doesn't know how to sew and then you try to have her make something that's what that looks like to me <laughs> pretty no much. i 100 percent agree like i think like the other two had fully fledged drag looks that were extreme and then they screwed whoever decided on her having that costume screwed her over with this super basic downplayed yeah look like there was nothing fantastic about it. Even the, even the, like if she was gonna be a flower, she should have been like a fucking like, like five hundred times bigger than real size flower. Like those flowers, right. like that skirt should have been like literally like four times the size that it was. The flower should have been like squirting out bubbles or something like that. Like it yeah. should have been full fantasy, not like a basic hoop skirt with a couple like glued on flowers that they found at Walgreens, like the fake flowers that they found at the 99 Exactly. They, they it looks not there so at the cute. Like if she had worn this on the, like if any drag queen had worn this, this is not shade to her because clearly she did not, I don't, I, I don't know. If any drag queen had worn this on the runway, Michelle Visage would have read them to filth because it would have been like, she would have been like, thank you for gluing those 99 cent store flowers onto that really basic thing that we've seen a hundred times before. On exactly. Top of well, the queens have worn that before and they've gotten red. That same cage number and they've gotten red. Yeah. If I was like, like literally at like a Milanese fashion show, like take Dolce and Gabbana, for example, and I'd be like, look 17. And then I would just like move on to the next thing. I mean, it'd be, like, <laughs> literally that. I could see it like, in a commercial store like a Neiman Marcus. <laughs> Not even that. But nobody would <laughs> no. buy it. It would be like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, lower level. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shane, no, it's, it's two arts and crafts DIY project for a main stage. Mm-hmm. Agreed. We'll call it Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the cotton candy one I did like, though, because that was a cute idea. Yeah. I guess I just have problems with the cage. Marie Antoinette is like so over, like it's it's like been done yeah. in many ways, but it was done in a way where I still appreciated it and looked good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I liked it because it was new with the cotton candy, so I thought it was cute for her. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, that cage, I, I that will give me nightmares. I, and especially just like you don't bring the celebrities on there and put them in something so cheap. They they want a real like drag experience from like they're supposed to be their mentors and then you put them in something cheap and then she it's just like no yeah it definitely it wasn't zaldi it was like zaldi's like third assistant <laughs> right i do think that yeah because I'm, i don't know how it is like you said but i don't know if it's like I, they're definitely not making it but i don't know if it's like they give them a budget or there is there like a room of things to pull from and then the like the mentor picks for them i wonder what the process is because i like i would like it to be that the mentor did the full look so that means like picking the garment too or making it if anything but just like putting them in the full look but I almost there's a part of me that almost thinks that it's possible that they even had like a stylist on set to be honest with you I wouldn't be surprised yeah I wouldn't be surprised either and it you know but it's like also clearly like sabotage if that's the case because it's like they're not blind. They know what they're doing. Like they gave right. these two other girls like fully fledged looks and then they threw this girl in this little thing. Like that would have been, that's, that is effectively sabotage. Right. <laughs> <It really So. laughs> and I forgot who won, who won at the 30,000? It was uh, uh, Queen Lezzo. Okay. All right. All right. How do we feel about that? I, well, again, the editing was real good because they had us thinking she was nobody in the beginning. <laughs> they had yeah. her kill it in, when it, she came to the main stage. Yeah. Um, I thought it was well-deserved. I thought that she gave like a very strong performance. Um, her looks were all on point. And uh, even though Phoebe was also really, really strong, um, I think Queen Lezzo just, you know, she went that extra mile. Um, and plus she had that story of being the underdog, which they like to do, you know? Yeah, they like the story. Yeah, I didn't really have like a clear winner in my mind at the end, but I also wasn't that emotionally invested <laughs> in this episode where I was like really rooting for someone and then that person didn't win and I'd be devastated. So I was just like, yeah, 
It was all right. Well, they are, they are also kind of serving something kind of different too. Stevie was kind of giving like a comedy and then Madison was kind of giving like sexy. So each person was kind of different. Yeah. All right, ladies, we are coming about an hour here. So what are our final thoughts on this episode? I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought it was good, but I, like I said, the other contestants before were definitely better in the past episode. Last episode of this sort of special. I would like to see drag kings next season. That's what I would really yeah. look for. I think it'd well, be I, another thing too, I'm wondering why is this the season finale? Why is it just four episodes? I wonder if they were going to film more and then Corona happened or... I think they're probably just giving it a try, see how it works. Like drag you, just kind of testing, testing Maybe. the waters to see. And plus, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a tough ask, you know, especially for like a straight male celebrity. Do you want to get in drag? You know, there's and, plenty of celebrities that would do it. A uh, Darren crew, you could get Darren Chris. I know he would immediately do it. There's plenty. I think Darren Chris might I was be a musical theater with Darren Chris. <laughs> huh? I said, I was actually a musical theater with Darren Chris. Oh, were you? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. God, yes, I always forget he's from San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, is he? He's from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, you know that? No, I didn't know that, actually. Oh, because, yeah, you love him, so. <laughs> and he's cute. Yeah. He's All right. at my family's house for, for Christmas. Wow. So, oh, so oh, wow. Very close, honey. Yeah, you are Well, close. I'm not that close to him, but my cousin is, because they they were in the same year, and they, they were, I think, I think they're still friends today. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. He was very, he was very, you know, cute back in high school. Everybody had a crush on him, man, woman, <laughs> whatever. Like, <laughs> He was very that. So I am super excited, like happy to see his success. Like he's just like blowing up now. Right. I love it. He's on Hollywood, that new Netflix show. Um, I'm not that deep into it. I'm only on episode two, I think. So I got it. Oh, you did start it? Yeah, but he was amazing on the Johnny Versace, uh, Ryan Murphy vehicle. He was creepy. Amazing in that. Really, really good. What would you say is like, can you like, I mean, I guess the difference is obvious, but what would you say is like the biggest difference as far as like filming that you can clock from when you were on it to now? Oh, for Drag Race in general? Yeah, I guess in general. What's the biggest difference that I see? Oh, well, the main one is that they finally like, I think, so the editing is always shady in the interviews because you might be saying one thing about something completely different and then all of a sudden you're saying about something else, which did happen to me. Um, Yes, um, but now, so that so now they make the girls wear the same thing in all their interviews, so they can edit it any way they want. Um, oh. So that is different because before you'd be like, oh, well, they were wearing an orange shirt in that last scene, and then now they're talking about the same thing, but they're wearing a, you know, a tank top. Um, oh, so then do they just like after the season, then they like bring them back, and then they do like watch every episode then? I don't know how they do it now. Back then they made us, at the end of the day was when we would do our interviews. Sometimes, oh. like when I got eliminated, I remember it was like a holiday weekend and I actually had to wait. Like I did my interview, I did a little bit of an interview, I think at the end of that, but they really did the interview like after that weekend. So it was just sort of like immediately after I had like my follow-up interviews. Um, yeah. So they, but they, they, if they still do it the same way, they, they shoot the interviews at the end of every day. Oh, they just make them put the same clothes back on then. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So honey, where can we see you next in San Francisco or abroad? Yes. Um, I, well, you know, we're all virtual now, so they can follow. Oh people. yeah. You have a virtual drag show coming up. Correct. Well, so the stud has drag alive, which is every Saturday. Um, we do a Twitch show. Um, people can, um, check it out. It's hosted by Vivian forevermore. And, um, uh, let's see. It's, Ooh, and now I'm like, why, why am I blanking on her name? This is shady. Uh, Jillian Narling. <laughs> 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 oh god i'm tired okay so it is hosted by jillian narling and um vivian forevermore and um they're incredible and I, I i perform on there occasionally um so i will i think i'm performing on there uh not this week but the following week and then um for the pride show in june I'm also hosting pride again it'll be virtual this year um sister roman and i have been hosting it every year for the last four years now um so we'll be hosting it virtually this year Yes. So pride. It's oh. the 50th anniversary. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, you're our first guest and like I could have you on every show. You're just Well, I mean, smart. the next 
for RuPaul, um, for the regular drag race, I thought it's crazy that they're doing the reunion virtually. Oh. And yeah, and you gave me the idea because you thought we were going to watch it live. Maybe you could come back and we watch it live. We could watch that live. That could be interesting. When is that? I think it's in two weeks. Two weeks. Ooh, and two yeah, weeks. I would love that. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah, okay. we're going to have to figure that out with the Zoom and the, the, all of that. We're going to have to talk about that off camera. <laughs> okay, sounds good. My schedule is a little crazy, so I'm not sure that I can, but I will, let, let's talk and let's see if I can get That's it in. That's okay. You're welcome anytime. For I just sure, you're definitely welcome anytime, honey. This was brilliant so and fun. such a community leader, and I'm so appreciative of all the work you do. Thank yes. you. Well, thanks for having me. And okay. yeah, so it was much. super fun. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And Thank everyone, you. subscribe below. Subscribe. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Bags and designer tags. Yes. Right. yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.